ahead, hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Remember, eagles rise with eagles. All right, now, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. This is Arthur Oma, and remember, eagles fly with eagles. Now, he's sitting at this table studying for his exam. But what he's also going to do is make fun of him. Going to make a quick uh, fool out of him. He's going to act like he in elementary school. Y'all remember elementary school? You got two apples and you take away one apple. How many apples will you have left? We learned that in kindergarten. And then uh, Marceau is laughing, but they have always made a fool out of Martel and his face. Y'all know Mel told him, and what he said? Mel, that's also I got a forgiving heart. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Okay, we like today to study for the G C test, but more so that joke like a little kid or something like that. And going at this rate, I won't be passing the test, and he would not be losing no weight. So at this point, I'm going to get another study part. So you know I can uh, make sure that I pass this test. <laughs> So now, so he made a complete fool out of this man. Y'all know this on national TV, you guys. Yeah. And he do look at him like that as being a fool. My soul do. But you see, uh, Melody has told them, uh, told him over and over and over that these, these, these people right here always make a fool out of you. They are not your friend yet. You make me your number one enemy. I can see him on stage again, too. No, that's cause I got a forgiving heart. Well, you forgave him and his, and, and, and his mother-in-law, his wife, for talking about your children. They stood on that stage, and they they stood up. They didn't back down on on uh defending Wanda on that stage when it, against your children, Martel. No, against little sugar mama. They stood firm on that. That you know, their mother and his mother in law was not talking about your baby. Anyway, that's cause they feel like you're stupid and you're ignorant. Even even um. It's about this is about how men with bad with bad tempers, yeah, bully women. They they will be having two grown men having temper tantrum at this table and bullying uh, Tiffany, a nine months pregnant woman with child. This is so sad. What well, I just want to say for you guys, don't prejudge Huntsville like this. I there's some good men in Huntsville. Ninety nine point nine percent of the men in Huntsville are great dads, fathers, husbands. No, this is this is the type of thing that Carlos shows. Well, let's get started, Tiffany. Right now, they have tricked Tiffany to come through the door. Martel pretended like he wants to talk about Selma when he was in Selma, representing uh, that Grand Marshal in Selma. So I I'm wondering why didn't he invite Big Lou? Why didn't he sit down and talk to Big Lou with Tiffany? Why didn't Martel go over to their home and discuss the situation? But let's get started, you guys. Why do I have to be two people? You're definitely two people. Are you still pregnant? I can't even tell with the black home. Thank you. I don't want to see one nice person and one nice yeah. person. He's a charmer. Not so nice. Tiff and I, we're supposed to discuss the project and sell. 
But after Sheree shared with me what Tiffany told her I'm about at my party, you know, I had some issues and I really want to get to the bottom of this. How you been? How y'all been? Yo, oh, this is weird. I'm, I'm sorry, there's a baby in there. Everyone keeps trying to put me on bed rest, like, no, you gotta make go. me stop. I'm like, I can't stop. That was the whole thing. How did y'all? So. She's, you know, she walks through the door. They talking about her pregnancy. So they know she's pregnant. They know she's with child. And sounds as though uh, Tiffany been warned having a little complication there. Because anytime the doctor tells you to be on bed work, rest, there are some type of complications going on where you have to take precaution. Now, these two men don't care what for them. They don't care what for them. They're sitting at this table. They ready. They ready to start expressing anger. And uh, my my tail gonna take his frustration out on her. But more than what's more than who else anger rose to the surface was Masu Scott. Now, how Masu Scott, y'all been warned, how Masu Scott talked to uh, Tiffany. Is how he talked to his wife daily. But can you imagine how that man treated uh, his wife when he she was pregnant? He probably really, really, really was uh, rude and had no type of compassion for his wife when she's pregnant. Okay, let's keep going. I think the um, upscale magazine like reveal. It was really well. I liked it. I liked the yeah. fact that it... Um, to get a chance to see because Martel doesn't really get celebrated. So people were really excited about the magazine reveal. Oh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, what was your highlight? I, you know what? It's so crazy because the highlight actually it did not happen at the event, it happened after the event. Here we come, Tim. Tim you, y'all should see the expression on her face. She now knows that this is a setup. She now knows that she's between two bad temper men that's getting ready to bully her, that's getting ready to have a temper tantrum, and their expression going to be so uncontrolled. Let's keep going. Sheree actually shared with me the conversation that y'all had at the event. Why did you go like that, though? You surprised that I'm nosy. Extremely surprised that you oh. kind of like went and grilled her off. Do you know how I got grilled coming into this group? Do you understand? She's my guest. Guys, my guest. tell me. I mean, I want to know. I got to rest. Now, why is he budding in? Why is this immature man budding in? Because you know why Tiffany is a woman. He feel like a woman have her place. And, and you know... With him saying, when him, with, with Tiffany talking about my so Martel cheating, right? That hit home for uh, my soul. Let's keep going. I started asking her questions like, how does it feel coming into the group? How's it been? She already, she said she's already like been in community with all y'all. You know, how does it feel like dating a cheater? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not a cheater. cheater. I'm not a cheater. I'm not a cheater. I am. Simmer down. I have cheated. You really carry this thing. How you feel? I got. I got to ask this question. Are you a cheater? He. You know what? This man right here. His uncontrolled anger. His uncontrolled anger. I'm talking about my soul. It's so much. To, it's the business. is between Tiffany, Tiffany and my soul. Now, I mean, Tiffany and Martell, well, it should be between Tiffany, Marcel, and Big Lou. But he's so uncontrolled with his anger, his, his disgust for women. He have to tell him, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold it. In other words, let me speak. All right, let me speak. So let me ask y'all something. For so long, y'all, I am a senior citizen now. Men with bad tempers get away with their uncontrolled expression. They can do everything in the world, but society memonize this immature childlike behavior. This is what uh, my soul is displaying up there. 
immature childlike behavior. They'll chalk it up by saying, oh, well, boys will be boys. That's just how men are. Mm -hmm. That's what they say when they're acting out like that. Immature men, immature boys. Here you go. I'm not a cheater. So I'm not a cheater either. I cheated and you are. Yeah, there you go. I'll give you that. Cheater. How's that? How's it going? You came and asked me how to feel that he's a cheater. Now, that, now, see, that's why the apple, we say, if you got three apples and I, and I give you two apples, how many apples do we have? See, there go that, that rationalization in his, his brain trauma. So, uh, I'm not a cheater, but I cheated. <laughs> what is it? Two minus one is what? I'm not a cheater, but I cheated. I'm not a cheater, but I cheated. Y'all get it? There is go to elementary school stuff. Okay. I'm just saying, I just wanted to know, like, how does it feel? As when, educated when as you are, she, she actually asked it like that. He said those words. I'm so annoyed that Martel decided to bring up this conversation with Sheree at a meeting. Sheree was so annoyed with a conversation or a question that I had with her, she's a grown woman. She would have come to me on her own. Martel chose right now with Marceau to have this conversation. That is not how I do business. I'm assuming you're not. Oh, wow, 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 wow. They, these men sitting at this table, these immature boys with a self-described bad temper at this woman. They they are bullying this nine month pregnant women. So let me let me say something once more. We found that many men who have a bad temper, at least the worst on this girl, they unleashing all of their anger on this girl. Like do they wives like like my soul like he do his wife. And, and and Martel like he did his ex wife. That's what they doing. They're, they're displaying their problem with their anger that they have. They're displaying their problem with their anger that they have. You guys, this is who we can most men with this kind of temper change. Both of them can most men who are bully change. Y'all 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 let me know. Because my soul and um, my tail need to change this stuff. They never have no consequences for their temper tantrum. I've seen this show from season one. My soul dog his wife out. My tail dog his wife out. There is never no consequences on this show. So that's why the reason men's and women's, even gay men's, talked about having the same problem with these kind of men's that bully and they, they get away with it. It's because they know that they're going to get away with things that they do. So oftentimes, the other partner is afraid to confront them or hold them unaccountable. They trying to bully this girl. They are bullying her. Let's keep it going. Trying to get somebody's business. We're going to do something with so this family. This wasn't the first question I asked her. So I asked somebody, hey, how do you cook eggs? I want to cook some eggs. There we go. So you say, how do you feel about dating the chief? I'm thinking about dating the chief. Mm -hmm. Or who do you think about dating? Or more like, how does it feel with this rumor, expectation, you know, narrative above his head? How does that feel to you? What are we going to do with information? I'm literally asking for me. And I wondered if, like, she had met my relationship at this point. Mm -hmm. So I just asked, like, how have you and Mel been together? Like, what's that relationship like? Well, you know because what? at some point, I would imagine they can even just be in community and conversation with each other. Melanie and I are not in community and conversation with one another. So Melanie and I, we got a lot to get, her and I, we got a lot to get done together before I even introduce anybody. You're such a good friend. You came to bring Mel and Sheree together. Now, you know, he keep cutting, he keep cutting uh, Martel out. Martel trying to talk to her. And I, you know what Martel, right now, Martel is, he shouldn't confront her, but the, the aggression is coming more from my soul. 
Yeah. Now look, my soul act like he act. Uh, my soul act like the girl is talking about him, right? So they struggling over there. She's struggling right now. You can look in her heart to tell that she wants to cry. With both of these men, they stand up there. Both of them got bad temper. They got some bad energy coming from them. And both these men display narcissistic personality traits, y'all. These men are more focused on their own feelings. Seem like when this girl is talking about cheating, my soul is it, it, something went all through my soul. Like he have a flashback. Like I said, he's he, he talking about him. Now, it's been established that uh, Martell is a cheater, but my soul will seem like he's taking it harder than, than, um, than, um, Martel, my soul is in his feelings with this pregnant woman. His image, uh, and then you know, he, he you know, uh, Martel got to keep up his self importance, his power. Yeah, both of them trying to do a power play over this woman. But anyway, he's not focusing on in nobody relationship. But he is. That's what I think going on with my soul. My soul has some internal problems going on it. at the root of these two grown men who acting out, bullying, bad temper, selfish of them to sit down at this table and not think about this woman, pregnant nine-month-old woman. They need help, both of them. Y'all need to see a pastor. Y'all need to pray. Y'all need to see a therapist. You know what? Because this is scary. I mean, scary. This is abusive. And this is a big problem that love and marriage turns to have with all the men on there, except for big loop. Abusive. They're aggressive. They have narcissist trait. And they're selfish. I'm wondering why Marceau is budding in this conversation, but it does not surprise me. Because we all know Marceau has tons of opinions. Why is this even his business? You've been dating for eight months, y'all have had sex, and you look like this you person. Have that you've been dating eight months. Well, to me. Now she keeps talking, he keeps budding in on this woman. This this man is bullying this woman, trying to exert his power and his control. Yeah, y'all, y'all saw that he did melody up there when he be on that reunion stage. He do melody like that when she's trying to talk. Now my my tail can't hardly get nothing now. This is bullying, and they're selling her. They, you know, you get you, they just selling. They smashing her like a like a sandwich in between, uh, uh, uh bullying her. And I can see that she's struggling too, trying to explain herself. She's struggling not to have uh, outbursts of tears. This is a problem, y'all. We're dealing with some cold-hearted men on this show. We're dealing with men that have temper tantrum, immature men. Yeah. There should have been a boundaries drawn with you, my soul. You should have just shut your damn mouth and let let my soul and 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 he should have said, "Well, look, you know, I'm gonna talk to your husband, or can we talk to your husband?" If he want to talk, Dama Martel, he could have uh, invited Big Lou too, but he didn't because they specifically wanted to. Uh, exert control and power over this pregnant woman. Boundaries. Boundaries. But Big Lou 
going to come for you guys. Y'all erupting on this woman like a volcano. But Big Lou, you need to check these bullies. I know it's talking for you, but I don't even know what that's like. Without, no, mind, because it's not my business. Yeah. That, that was, I wasn't I'm even asking her about your sex life. That wasn't yeah. asking her about your sex life. My whole point was, was you have children together. And what I do care about is like, I love blended families. I actually think blended family is a beautiful thing. My kids benefit from having a blended family. I am an advocate for getting it right. And me and baby daddy, we like went head to head for a long time. It took us a minute. I wish I would have gotten my since you, got, since you got it right, now you feel like you're an expert. You're I did not say I was an expert. You said I was an expert. Thank you. No, I'm not an expert. Come back, please. I think that this time, Tiffany's pregnancy probably saved her. Anyone in Sheree's shoes would retaliate physically, to say the least. It was definitely an insult. Is, is this true that you mentioned something about? It's not good to feel like she's going to keep you and Melly can keep you something like that. I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm 100%, 100% and allegedly on top of it. Sure that my soul is focused on his own feelings. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on with your my soul? You do every season. They've been catching you uh, talking about you cheating. But you need to go sit, sit down somewhere. You go somewhere and leave that woman alone. Talking about, oh, Sheree need to retaliate, retaliate with violence. Because that's the greatest mistake. That would have happened with her on a pregnant woman. Yes, you said that. What the f is wrong with you? I don't remember saying that. You don't? You think we're close to us? The ring's around? Yeah, for the conversations we have, I don't think so. Did you put it down like that? You think that's why? <laughs> You don't remember. Just the day break. I'm just first of all, we'll keep that. No. Really? No. Commitment does. What else did she say? That she thinks that I still have feelings for male because I was chasing her around at Kimmy's event and stuff like that. I don't think that I made it seem like it's anything more yeah, than he's chasing her around and chasing some chasing some influence. So it's almost you trying to break break us up before we get there. Absolutely. This is the this is Absolutely not. You know what? Yeah, you need to go somewhere with just acting my soul. My tail because everybody know that you don't even care for for Sheree and Sheree probably don't care for you. We all know this is a bald story. You guys is mentally abusing this woman with your bad temper. Bullies, immature man. Somebody get tested. We're in the camera. You're about to care because I'm not white. No, just because of your actions. Like that. There's plenty of white people in the camera. Really? Let's get that. Let's get that quick. Hmm. Like you don't know Sheree, and you don't know how deep our relationship is for you to even be sharing any information. Like what I gathered out of this conversation with your new boo is that she's very strong. She holds her own. She appreciates you for who you are. She understands where you are in place and position. I also learned that she's not quick to slap. Y'all heard that? She needs to slap the mm out of her. This man got so it's got a nasty behavior. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to nasty, just nasty behavior. That's what he got. Big Lou, you need to check these two men. This is bullying. This is so disrespectful. This is what you guys in history of Alabama and you and M University is a land grant. That means that they are funded by the state. Yes, they're funded by the state and they do receive federal funds. Now, y'all talk about Tisha graduating all that time, keep going to school. But I, when I was going to a and a lot of them was career. They were career. They would go back over and over and over because that grant was free money. You do not have to pay that money back. Now, I was just suspecting that since my soul didn't have no job, that's how Tisha fed her family. I'm not mad at her because, you know, they pay good, yeah. You 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 get your grant money, you get a big old check, and what you do is, out of it supposed to come your school fees and your books, yeah. You 
go. You buy all them little cheap books from the students and used books, and you have all that extra money in your pocket. They, those grants was good back in the day because I used them too. But anyway, getting back on this T-shirt. Yeah, I know what you did, T-shirt. You bragging about boasting about all them degrees you got. Yes, you got them. Cost of this, these free grants. Yeah, you get all these federal funds. You get all this grant and money. And you don't have to pay them back. But anyway, the federal funds and the state grants, land grant was stipulated by the Moore Act. The Moore Act was in 1862 and 1890. Now, the Moore Act, the Congress said everybody had a right to education. Well, let me tell y'all something. This this slave, y'all, he was intelligent. He went and challenged them on that. Yeah, it took a while. They they implanted that it was strictly supposed to be for the Euros. But no, he wouldn't take no for an answer. He got out of slavery. He was an ex-slave. So what, what they did, the bill was passed and uh, Congress approved him. Yes, he was a very intelligent man, although he was a slave. He had no education. He organized, he organized the university when the bill was passed and Congress approved it in 1875. Yeah, Mr. William Council was his name, an ex-slave. So what they did, the grant opened up in 1875 with a thousand students, with a thousand dollars a year, 61 students and two teachers. So 18, by 1878, the school had utilized industrial and me mechanical uh, as their program. It was so successful to the government and the Congress. They started giving them more funds. It increased to $4,000 a month. So this Black History Spotlight go to William Council. He was the first president of Alabama and, and, and Yes, he was, you know. And then that $4,000 was approved by eight, August the 30th, 1891, was when the, um, when the, uh, when that four thousand dollars a month was approved and then y'all let me tell y'all some money just stopped pouring in from the community to keep this school going i mean we united and uh, so you got a lot of notables here I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this way so you can see the school on top of the hill hopefully y'all can see but see some of this building you know. yeah so you got a lot of notables i'm walking back to the car this is uh the uh normal alabama on top of this hill yeah but they do and still do they feed the community they still do it you guys on the side this is a lot of money they go way back maybe about two miles down you got land and uh dorms teachers um, bought homes and stuff on the side of the road. But what I was getting ready to show y'all is that Alabama A&M feed the community. Yeah, you can go out there and pick greens and corn and peaches, apple, string beans, anything you want, you go out there and you got to pick it yourself, you know. Anyway, Black Excellent goes to Alabama and Amazon. Will you cancel the first president?